you spend a lot of time in certain sections of the media, you could be forgiven for thinking that heat pumps are an untested technology, completely ineffective, or frankly evil. There are some people in our country that believe that heat pumps are a technology being forced on the unwilling British public for some nefarious reason. Well, you might be listening to us at Elite Renewables and thinking, yeah, well, of course you're biased, you're heat pump installers. So today we want to introduce you to someone who is not from Elite Renewables. This is Maddie, and Maddie's a client of Elite Renewables. We installed a heat pump for her a few years ago. And since then, Maddie has become a bit of a heat pump advocate. Today, we're gonna to sit down with Maddie and run through some of the most common objections and misconceptions that people have about living with a heat pump to get her take on them. Okay, this comment from the comments section says, heat pumps work in new builds, which should have much better insulation, but they don't work well in older buildings. Whilst Bug Field Tip says, heat pumps only work on new properties designed to accommodate, which in turn physiology justifies new house price increases. Old house don't waste your money. I think what they're trying to say, Maddie, is that whilst it might be great if you've got a new build house, which is very well insulated, for an older property, which is gonna have less insulation, a heat pump's just gonna be a disaster. Well, I would agree that a new house purpose built for a heat pump is going to be very, very efficient. But here we are sitting outside a 1911 house. It's got solid walls. It hasn't got cavities. Um, most of the heating system is radiators. There's a little bit of underfloor in the extension. The heat pump works perfectly fine. So I think for anybody who's got a house of a certain age and had a heat pump fitted, they're just going to be reading that and going, guys, what are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, fundamentally, you're providing hot water to a heating system, aren't you? So there's no reason why a heat pump shouldn't work in an older property. There's a question of efficiency, but you're going to be running a less efficient heating system, whether it's gas or electric, in an older property. I mean, my rule of thumb is if you're a gas boiler can produce enough heat and that you're talking about a standard gas boiler that you would sell to a domestic customer. It can produce enough heat to heat the house up. All you need is another unit that produces the same amount of heat, and there is a heat pump that will do that. Older properties, heat pumps can still work in these, even if they're not as, as insulated as a new build property, for example. The main thing is to make sure that as the heat pump is, is working, it's providing enough heat for each of the rooms that you know, has a radiator inside. Essentially, the goal is to you know, heat the whole house, even if it's got a high heat loss. The main thing for the heating system is to provide that heating per room. So what are the questions that people who have an older property should be asking to make sure that they get a heat pump that's right for them? It's quite easy using some government statistics to compare the amount of energy you use in your house to what is typical in the UK. And if you do that, you can find out very quickly with your annual gas bill, for example, whether your house is using more or less than average. And if it's using an average amount of electricity for its size or less, you're pretty much ready to start investigating heat pumps. If it's using more energy than average, then you're spending too much on gas. So you should really start looking at ways to reduce your gas bill. And nearly all the things you might do to reduce your gas bill, loft insulation, double glazing or secondary glazing, and particularly draft proofing. Lots of people lose a huge amount of heat through drafts around their windows, badly fitting doors, even your loft hatch. And if you do these simple things that are pretty normal for everyday people, you can get your gas consumption back nearer what's typical for your size of house. And if you get a house that's typical, then you've got a house that you can consider putting a heat pump in. If you are considering replacing your boiler and you're about to talk to someone about heat pumps, don't forget to talk about any maintenance or improvements you're already planning. If you're going to have an extension built, it's probably going to be a lot more energy efficient than your existing house is. Or if you're going to get double glazing put in, because if your installer knows that, they may be able to give you a smaller unit than otherwise, and that would save you money on the install. So make sure everybody is well informed about where you're going and what you're planning to do. So yeah, extensions and installation details are very important because as we're doing the heat loss survey it's important for us to know the amount of energy the house requires so we obviously take all the measurements that we need and any future changes to the property is very important such as extensions to be able to factor that in when we're sizing the heat pump when the heat pump is sized it needs to be sized according to what the property needs so anything too above above that level or too below what's required can potentially be problematic or wasteful as well and it's very important for the efficiency of running the system as well you don't want to be running the system too hard if it's undersized and if it's very oversized as well it just won't be very efficient and, and you know having a large buffer vessel or a large hot water tank that's oversized if a heat loss uh, survey is not done correctly can affect you know the, the running costs and efficiencies of the, of the system. So Purple Sparrow from the English Channel in Antarctica says we're still going to need loads of electricity to run these heat pumps and where is this going to be produced between electric vehicles and heat pumps 
we're going to need more power stations than we have. Maddie, is the UK's electric grid really going to be able to sustain the sort of heat pump take up that we're anticipating? Uh, it's obviously going to increase the load, but a boiler typically lasts for about 15 years, so we're not actually installing heat pumps very quickly. And we're installing wind farms and solar farms much faster. So we're actually increasing the electricity that's produced in the UK faster than we're increasing the demand from things like heat pumps. So possibly we should be asking why are we even asking this question at all? Because it doesn't seem to make much sense. I suppose another difference between heat pumps and gas boilers is as you are doing, you can generate your own energy for a heat pump through solar. I don't expect you've been producing your own gas for a gas boiler before you had the heat pump installed. So there is a bit of local generation here that's possible with a heat pump that isn't with, uh, with fossil fuels. Yeah, you can, though solar happens in the summer and heating happens in the winter. So you can't be 100% self-sufficient. It's probably important to say that our grid doesn't have the same demand 24 hours a day. There's a really big peak at breakfast time and there's another peak at tea time and what the companies your suppliers really want to do is make sure that you don't use all your power at those two times because it's that peak that actually determines how many power stations we need to build so for things like ev cars they offer you a preferential rate at night between midnight and five in the morning everybody sets the timer on their car plugs it in goes to bed and they get very cheap electricity for their cars that doesn't really disturb anybody you know people are very happy doing that and in some ways that's helping to balance demand because it's putting demand into the night. Heat pumps can do that as well to a certain extent. You can make sure your house is warm before breakfast time by heating it up between five and seven in the morning. You can warm it up in the afternoon between two and four and then not be running your heating at full blast between five and seven in the evening when everybody's cooking tea. And you can get a tariff that will actually make it cheaper if you do that. So there's small incentives to encourage people with heat pumps just to spread the load out over the day. And that's all helping us with security on our national grid and energy security for the country. So in some ways they're a solution to the problem rather than a problem in themselves. We notice a couple of things. We notice a lot of our clients will install a battery even if they don't have solar so that they can recharge during the low cost periods in their tariff and then they can use that heat throughout the day to power their heat pump even during peak times. There's also technological solutions to this, aren't there? Like the Havenwise app, for example, which integrates with your heat pump and your tariff to make sure you, all you do on your app is you set what temperature you need your house at. And then it does all the rest in the background, looking at the weather, looking at the tariff and looking at your heat pump to make sure that you're paying as little as possible for your electricity. And I think that's key. Your typical person doesn't want to be a heat geek. They just want to set and forget. So you want to set your thermostats, you want to have your clever electronics in the background, you want to have a relationship with your energy company where they're trying to give you cheap electricity. You want to set it all up and then you want to get on with your life. Mm. And it should just work for you and you should only really see it in terms of the fact that your bills are not particularly high because you've managed to actually access this cheaper electricity. So Maddie, what should people ask if they're concerned about uh, using as little electricity as possible or making sure that they can tap into these off-peak tariffs? What should they be asking their installer? I think it's probably important to say you need a smart meter and I understand people have concerns about that, but they are really the only way that you can get different prices at different times of the day because they have to measure how much you've used between midnight and five in the morning. So you will need a smart meter. And then you can just talk to your installer about how your system might be set up to actually talk through Wi-Fi. So can it talk through Wi-Fi and access information about tariffs? Can it talk through Wi-Fi and access weather information? You may not want to do it immediately, but it's nice to know that it has the capability. Obviously that will feed into apps so you can see how you're doing if you're very geeky or whatever. But one of the really important things of that is it will allow the machine to actually talk to the service engineers remotely and that will reduce the number of service visits you need to have because nobody will come and see it until a fault is reported. That's very true. I think it's important to remind people that you don't have to be, you might be thinking, oh, I need to be controlling my heat pump with my app all the time and looking at the weather and looking at my tariff. That's not the point, is that the heat pump wants to do that. The heat pump will take on all of that for you. I think the householder really wants to set the thermostat. Yeah. So you decide how warm you want your house to be, whether you want it warm morning and evening or warm during the middle of the day, what temperature you like at night as a minimum. Do that, that's what you've always done. Um, and the rest should all be built in and just working for you on your behalf and, and making your life more comfortable and easier. 
Maddie, one of the questions that people have is heat pumps are gonna take up a huge amount of space in my home. Of course, we've got the outside unit and then we've got all of the indoor gubbins as well. Um, so what do you say to that? Well, I've brought you in here so you can see the impact of that. Installers, certainly in the early days, tended to use all the space available and they would spread out across your walls. And clearly that's not appropriate for smaller properties and it's probably not what most people want. You can see where my boiler used to be and they've really gone for it. I think the way the industry needs to move is they need to get down to a units inside that are about the same size as boilers have been for some time. And that means about the size of a kitchen cabinet like this one. And there's no reason why the control equipment and pumps and the actual electronics which are over here couldn't be built into this. But I think that's really a question for the industry and, and for Tim and his guys to tell us which way it's going in future. So space in smaller houses that a heat pump requires is very variant on the system that's gonna be going in. If we're looking at a very basic open loop system, then we could certainly fit all the equipment into the same space as your boiler's coming out of, excluding the cylinder, which will need to be in another location. There is a common misconception that you need a buffer tank on a heat pump system. That's not always the case. If you run an open loop system, actually, you need that volume of water to do your defrost cycle. You can either have that through a volume or a buffer but generally speaking if you're running an open loop system if you've got that volume of water in your system already you don't need to have a buffer so when it comes to space you actually don't need that much space in the house to, to house the internal equipment all you need space for is your internal cylinder some pipe work valves and the controls and that can usually fit in a you know a reasonably sized cupboard that you'd normally have for a, a gas boiler and a hot water cylinder so Maddie one argument that people have is I can only afford to get a heat pump because of the subsidy. If the subsidy is not here in future, what happens when I need to replace my heat pump? Am I gonna to have to be spending 12, 15, 20,000 pounds every 15 years? Think of your heat pump conversion the first time as a conversion. It's like getting central heating put into a house that used to have coal fires. There's a lot of disruption that you wouldn't normally do when you changed your boiler, but it's a one-off. You're going to get the pipework, the pumps, the expansion vessels, all the connections that go to the exterior unit. You get them put in, you might need a couple of new radiators, you get those put in, and that's you converted to heat pump technology. In future, if your heat pump needs upgrading or you want to replace it, you build an extension, you need a bigger one, it's a very simple replacement process which you could compare to getting a new gas boiler. No, it's not gonna cost 15 to 20,000 pounds every time you get a heat pump installed. The first time you get a heat pump installed, it will cost more money because there's a lot more involved the first time around, which is why the government do subsidize 7,500 pounds towards that. That initial installation cost but the next time you need a heat pump installed it will cost you a lot lot less so the first time you get a heat pump installed there are a few things that you need to pay for that you might not pay for the second time round. so the first thing is the heat pump itself also known as the monoblock unit the hot water cylinder you might feel like you've already got the right one but you do need a bigger one with a larger coil inside for a heat pump you've got the fly and return pipe work from the heat pump itself to the cylinder and to the radiators. There's the new radiators and underfloor heating that might need to be installed to cope with the lower heat that's delivered from the heat pump. Upgraded power supplies for the heat pump itself or other various sort of aspects of the control system. You have to pay for the initial heat loss survey to make sure that the heat pump that is being installed in your system matches the heat loss of your property. And then you've got the system design, so based around what type of heat pump and what type of system we're fitting it to, you do need a thorough design made. And then the control systems, which attaches to the heat pump, being the indoor controllers, the wiring sensors, and the thermostats and things. But when you're looking at the second time round, the installation isn't gonna cost all of these things. You will need to get the heat pump replaced, but you should already have a compatible heat pump, a cylinder, fly and return pipe work in the right places, the right size radiators or underfloor heating system, the upgraded power supplies, the heat loss survey is done, the system design is done, and you might need a new controller. The second heat pump installation won't cost anywhere near as much as the first time because you're not gonna need a lot of these things. If you're thinking about heat pump, solar, battery, MVHR, or air conditioning for your property, then contact us at Elite Renewables. You can give us a ring on 020-8706-0056, or you can contact us through our website at eliterenewables.co.uk. We make the process really simple. So we'll have an initial chat where we'll be able to give you a ballpark estimate for your project. We'll then send one of our technical team over to your property to visit you, to understand the property in a bit more detail, and to conduct a detailed survey so that we can give you an exact quote. Contact us by giving us a ring or dropping us an email through our website today.